Welcome to Baccalaureate. And now we will welcome the presence of the Lord. Shall we pray? O oh, most high God, like the psalmist, we give thanks with our whole heart. We recount your wonderful deeds. We exalt your name. We sing praises to you. We are here today because of the work that you've done in the lives of our graduates. We are in this moment because of you. We would not have made it or passed through the fire, the flood, or the plague without your righteous right hand upon us. So we give you thanks. We recount your deeds. We exalt your name. We give you praise, O oh master educator. So we ask that you would bless this service. We ask that you would bless each speaker, each student, each singer, each supporter. And we will be sure to give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen.
Greetings and welcome to the baccalaureate services of Oakwood University for the class of 2021. I'm Leslie Pollard, president of Oakwood University, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to the singular accomplishments of this distinguished class. Oakwood University opened its doors in 1896, and now this year, in 2021, we are celebrating 125 years of service to God and to humanity. And what better way to celebrate that length of service than by simply launching out into the atmosphere and the stratosphere of service, the class of 2021. They come from all walks of life. You have students who are from the United States. We have a large cohort of international students. There are students who started with us when they were 18, and there are students who now in their 50s and 60s are completing their baccalaureate degrees. We're just grateful today and grateful for the opportunity of saying congratulations to this great class. And as you go out into the field of service, I want you to know, class of 2021, that all that we have attempted to pour into you here at Oakwood University, that will carry you not just for four years, but for 40 years and then, God willing, forever. Congratulations to the class of 2021. May you be blessed as you launch from this, the Rocket City, into the stratosphere of service. May God bless you. Good morning and happy Sabbath to each and every one. I'd like to extend greetings on behalf of the Oakwood University Church and welcome you to worship. Back your Lord's service is worship. And so on this Sabbath, we wish you a hearty welcome on this blessed graduation baccalaureate Sabbath. To Dr. Pollard, as well as the university administrators, faculty, staff, students, well-wishers, parents, church members, family members, and most importantly, the graduating class of 2021. Congratulations. May God bless you. This has been a very interesting year. COVID-19 has changed the entire space and environment in which we live, but you have persevered. The Lord be praised, and we congratulate you today. Happy Sabbath. Happy graduation Sabbath. Happy baccalaureate to each and every one. And then last, but certainly not least, I'd like to wish all of our mothers a very happy Mother's Day. May God bless you is my prayer. Greetings and happy Sabbath, Oakwood class of 2021, family, friends, and faculty. As Mr. Oakwood University for the 2021 school year and a graduating senior, I wanna take the opportunity to welcome you all to graduation weekend and this service. I invite each and every one of you to join us in celebrating the goodness of God and the success of this graduating class.
is not just superficial. It's real, it's like, a, it is a, a family. I left Oakwood my sophomore year, spring semester, and what caused me to leave was I, um, I struggled with depression and anxiety, and so that's why I left so that I could just be mentally healthy while I'm at Oakwood and not just go through the cycle of being burnt out and then not feeling well and then coming back and trying to make things work. I think that the greatest support that I got on campus was from the Office of Spiritual Life and Mission, specifically Chaplain Pileggi. Like he really just gave me room and gave me a space to not be okay sometimes and like okay I need to I need to leave today <laughs> and it was totally okay and I was able to do that professionally learning how to do it professionally and then being able to come back the next day um, was really an encouragement because of the great community that Oakwood is um, I think that the COVID isolation was minimized for example Dr. Ranatunga still is willing to take time after the virtual class session and just talk about life. He, he's always so willing to just give it, um, advice about academia and also ask about how families are doing and all of that. I'm going to the seminary to um, pursue my MDiv and then after I'm still planning on going to medical school. So my ultimate goal is to establish holistic health community centers um, for underserved populations.
Good morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. My name is Victoria Clemens, and I am the senior class treasurer. What does it mean to be a cheerful giver? When something is done cheerfully, it is done with a happy heart. God encourages us to give cheerfully and with a willing spirit. In Luke 6, verses 38, the Bible says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. When we become overwhelmed with financial hardships, we have to remember God's promises to us. I, like many of my classmates, worried about financial clearance every single school year. Every year, we find ourselves making numerous amounts of calls to the financial aid office and applying for endless amounts of scholarships. It can be quite overwhelming, and it is easy to convince ourselves that there is no way out. It can be just as easy to convince ourselves that we don't have any room to return a faithful tithe and offering to God. However, the Bible encourages us not to be anxious. Instead, we should present our requests to God, and he will give us peace. Philippians 4 verses 19 says, But my God shall supply all your need according, according to his riches and glory by Jesus Christ. It is important that we hold on to God's promises and have faith in knowing that God will always provide for us. So I encourage you today to give, just as God has given to us. After a career fair, uh, I talked to one of the nurses that they had, they had there, and I really liked what they were pitching. I, I definitely was wooed in. You know, I started my nursing career here, got into the program the next semester, and it didn't start off too bad, you know, as a freshman in the program, you know, you have those basic classes, gen eds and everything. You know, as, as time goes on, sophomore, junior, it just got really difficult. My, my dean over at West Oaks, Dean Camille, one thing that she always emphasizes us when we talk about nursing is, Nursing is a professional school. You come out of college and you're, you're into the job. You're taking care of people. People's lives are in your hand. I knew that coming in, I wasn't going to be just chilling out, lackadaisical, just doing what I wanted to do. I knew I'd have to sit down and really take the time to do what I wanted to do. The biggest impact I had for my friends was just encouragement. Oakwood's campus in general is very, it's like a family. There's plenty of times where I've wanted to give up or go back home, do something else, you know be a construction worker or something like that, but they encourage you to keep pushing on because at the end of the day, people have done it. People have gone through and people have graduated and people have become very successful. After graduation, I plan on taking a few weeks to study for my NCLEX, then passing the NCLEX, God willing, and then I have a job that I took in Ohio at Kettering. I'll be working on the ICU step down there and I'll be staying there for about three years after that, I plan on going back to school so I can be a CRNA, a nurse anesthetist. Happy Sabbath. My name is Brianna Dean, and I will be reciting the scripture in English. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. Hello, my name is Jafet Toledo. I will be reading 2 Corinthians 4, 8, and 9 in Spanish. And it says, Que estamos atribulados en todo, pero no angustiados, en apuros, pero no desesperados, perseguidos, pero no desamparados, derribados, pero no destruidos. Good morning, my name is Monica Elskamp, and I will be reading 2 Corinthians 4, verse 8 through 9 in Dutch. Als die in alles verdrukt worden, doch niet benood, twijfelmoedig, doch niet mismoedig, vervolg, doch niet daarin verlaten, nederworpen, doch niet verdorven. Hi, my name is Fiso Jean Mlandiwa, and I'll be reading a verse in Ndebele. Good morning. My name is Rodley Point Du Jour, and I will be reading the verse in Haitian Creole. 
Moi, je toute qualité de difficulté, mais moi, pas jamais coincé net. Moi, quand je vivais dans situation, moi, pas quand ni ça pour me faire, ni ça pour me dire, mais moi, pas jamais perdu espoir. Yo pense qui t'aime, mais bon Dieu pas jamais lagé moi. Moi prends un gros saut, mais moi pas arrêté à terre. Let freedom ring, let freedom ring, oh ring, from the hills to the valleys, let freedom ring, let freedom ring, let freedom ring, from the hills to the valleys, freedom ring, freedom ring, let freedom ring, freedom ring, freedom ring, freedom ring, let freedom ring. Happy Sabbath, everyone. It is my honor and privilege to present our speaker for the hour. Passion, Purpose, Resilience. Dr. Glenward Alexander Bryant first felt his call to ministry just one year after becoming a member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Later, as he observed his pastor preaching the word with fiery enthusiasm at an evangelistic meeting, he sensed the calling again and knew exactly what God wanted him to do. He found his passion, he knew his purpose. At the age of 19, his love for evangelism and teaching led him to serve in Japan as a student missionary for one year. Experiencing mission service in another country was life-changing, transforming his understanding of other cultures and traditions. Not only did this solidify his desire to go into ministry, but also revealed how God can use anyone who puts his or her life in his hands. He encourages all young people to use their energy, witness, enthusiasm, commitment, and talents to make a difference in the lives of others. Dr. Bryant earned his Bachelor of Arts in Theology and Business Administration from Oakwood College in 1981. He was ordained to the Gospel Ministry in 1986 and earned his Master of Divinity from the Seventh-day Theological Seminary at Andrews University in 1988. In December 2011, he received his Doctor of Ministry from Fuller Theological Seminary. He began his pastoral ministry in Springfield, Missouri, and in Coffeefield and in Independence, Kansas in 1982. Dr. Bryant went on to serve as Temperance Director, Youth Pathfinder National Service Organization Director, and Superintendent of Education at the Central States Conference before being elected conference president in 1997. 
The General Conference Executive Committee recognized that God had given Dr. Bryant the special gift of leadership and elected him to serve as Executive Secretary of the North American Division in October 2008 in Manila, Philippines. He was re-elected in Atlanta, Georgia at the 2010 General Conference session. With passion, purpose, and resilience, Dr. Bryant currently serves as the fifth president of the North American Division and vice president of the General Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. He believes lasting change comes from the heart and encourages the church to go after the hearts of the people by witnessing through service to truly transform lives. Dr. Bryant is happily married to the former Desiree Wimbish, current associate director of the NAD Ministerial Association. Dr. and Mrs. Bryant are the proud parents of Travis, Traven, and Terrence. They have three grandchildren. It takes everyone working together, supporting and building on each other to advance God's kingdom and triumph over these uncertain times. Dr. Bryant challenge, challenges everyone to step up as church and bring the gospel that we love and believe in to the community we have been called to serve with passion, purpose, and resilience. After this musical selection, the next voice you will hear is Dr. G. Alexander Bryant. <laughs>
Congratulations to the 2021 class of Oakwood University. I thank you so much for the invitation to be with you and celebrate this tremendous milestone in your life. Uh, your parents and all those who have supported you. To Dr. Pollard, president of Oakwood University and the administration and staff, thank you for the invitation, for joining and celebrating this momentous occasion. Uh, with all of you. Graduation is a tremendous milestone. And you know, one of the things about graduating with a degree, that no matter what happens, no one can take it from you. You'll make money and you'll lose money. You will get a great job and possibly lose a great job. But when it comes to this achievement, it's an achievement that you will have for life. It is yours. And congratulations on the successful completion of your university experience. You've completed 16, 17, 18 years of formal education. And now God has called you. He has shaped you. And you have done this in an environment of tremendous uh, racial injustice and inequities, COVID-19, a political environment that has gone haywire, and yet God has used each of these events to shape you and mold you to be the graduate and to be the person that you are. This experience has shaped your intellect, strengthened your spirituality, and heightened your sense of service and calling. It has molded your sense of community and impacted your worldview. This is expressed in a wonderfully selected aim and motto and scripture. The grace of God has led us, your, your aim, in Jesus' footsteps to witness to others. We will depart to show God's love to whomever we meet. Your motto, I love your motto. Our identity is not the challenges we face, the things we've suffered, or what we've lost. It is our choice to preserve and rise above. It is our resilience and your scripture. We're hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. What a fitting aim, motto, and class scripture for what you have just experienced during these last 14 months. But I ask for what purpose? Why have all of this come about? The formal education, the life experience, for what purpose? You've attended chapels, worships, 
You've been molded by spiritual mentors and teachers. For what purpose? I say to you today, it is for the purpose of soaring. Not being ordinary, but being extraordinary. God has poured into you through these wonderful teachers, dedicated staff, committed friends, supportive parents. He has done it for one purpose and one purpose only. God graduate means for you to soar. Our scripture today, Hebrews eleven six, where God says nothing will be restrained from them that they imagine to do. Nothing will be restrained from them that they imagine to do. Let us pray. Father, we place ourselves in your hands right now. And we ask that you might speak to us, hide the preacher behind the cross of Calvary, that we may not see him, but we might see Jesus. And we may be given a fresh glimpse of him that will inspire us to soar. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Genesis eleven six 6 says, And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. I want you to remember this scripture in Genesis chapter 11 is a scripture uh, that is taken uh, after the flood. And men and women in those days said, we're going to design something that we don't have to worry about that anymore. And, and they began to build this tower and the Bible, this is God speaking. And I want you to capture what God is saying because it's significant for our, our reflections today. God said, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. This is God speaking. And th what it is telling us is God is acknowledging something here. God is acknowledging that he has put in man the ability to achieve what his imagination and his heart has dreamed. That God has acknowledged, God is acknowledging here in this scripture that he has put in mankind, he has put in our minds, he has put in our brains the ability to achieve that that we have imagined. God says nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. And God is not saying this when man stood in the sinless garden of Eden. He said this after man had fallen, after sin and after death had entered the post-edemic home of Adam. God is speaking to men after sin, after the fall, after they had messed up. And God says, even after sin, I have put something in mankind that is in his brain and in his power and in his ability to do what his imagination has dreamed to do. I think that is a powerful statement to, to God's people today, to the graduates of Oakwood University 2021. God is saying, nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Nothing. This is God speaking. And so God says, let us go down there and confound their language. God says, the only way I can stop them, I'm going to have to go and confound their language. He said, but there is in mankind, God has placed in us the ability to achieve that what the imagination has dreamed to do. And I want to just get three points from this message that God has designed you, graduate, to be extraordinary, not ordinary. God has designed us God has put in us extraordinary abilities. That's point number one. God has designed you to imagine out of the normal possibilities. In other words, God has designed us to dream things that are impossible. These men had never seen a Tower of Babel built before. 
They had never seen something that to reach the heavens before, but God had placed in them the ability to dream impossible dreams. The ability to think outside of the box, to think outside the normal uh, situations. God put in them that ability. And so God has designed you to imagine Things outside of the normal, the outside of normal possibilities. And then God has designed you with a resilience to keep thriving until you achieve what you have imagined. David said it this way, that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm here to tell you that God has created each of us with the incredible potential. Why? Because we're created in this image, the image of God. God said, let us make man in our own image. You and I are made and created and recreated in the image of God. And even after sin, being created in God's image allows us, it gives us the ability, even after sin, even after we've messed up, even after man has fallen, God has placed in us the ability to achieve, to achieve that what our hearts have imagined to do. I love that this morning. I am excited about what God has put in us. The point is that this graduation weekend is a great milestone, but it is only the beginning of what God has in store for you. What God is saying, if you can believe it, you can achieve it. If you can conceive it, you can attain to it. If you can put it in your mind, God says, I've given you the ability to reach whatever you've imagined to do. Now, the enemy will cause you to doubt yourself and believe you will be doing good uh, just to get a decent job when you graduate. That's dreaming too small. God has called you to more than just get by or just to make it. God has designed you to soar. It's not just about getting enough, doing enough to get by. It is about soaring to the realm that God has planned for you. Reaching your God-given potential. God has given us this thing called the brain. And even after sin, what is incredible, it's an incredible asset, the brain. Most experts who study the brain believe it is a capable of almost unlimited potential possibilities. It is a remarkable creation. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. There is no limit to what you can become by God's grace. We, we marvel at the, the, the great inventions and the technology, but one piece of equipment. You know, we talk about the telescopes. We talk about the GPS systems and the biotechnology and all that man has created. And the, the, the cars with the ability to parallel park themselves. And isn't that a blessing? Because some of us can't do it on our own. We, we think about artificial intelligence and what it does. And it is fantastic. It is amazing. It is tremendous when we think about AI and what it is doing. But they cannot hold a candle to what God has given us in the brain. The potential that God has given us, what he has put in between our ears, the, the, the capabilities, the, the un, immeasurable potential inherent in us. And someone said the brain's processing power is, 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 is amazing. It says the brain can process a thousand trillion operations per second. Did you get that? A thousand trillion operations per second. The Synapse Project said that the brain has 38 petaflops and it is capable of processing 
1,000 trillion operations per second. That's what God has given you. And that's what God has given me. And when God was speaking here in Genesis chapter 11, it is part of what God is talking about when he says nothing will be restrained from them because God knows how and what he has made us to be. He knows the potential that we have, the potential that each one of us have. So I just came by today to tell you, that you have been designed to soar, designed to soar to untold potential. And there is a resilience that God has given us that allows us to go past any storm, any challenge, any difficulty. We're in this moment now in the COVID moment. We're in the racial and equity moment. We're in a political firestorm. But God has brought, these, brought us to this intersecting point in life so that we can soar in spite of the challenges. In fact, the challenges really make us soar even more. It means everything and anything is possible with God. It means it already resides in us. What must we do with this reality? Isaiah 40, 31 says we will mount up with wings as eagles. God says in the pandemic. See, we are designed to soar in the pandemic. God has placed in us. He said nothing that comes to our imagination will be withheld from us. That's what the text is saying. Nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. And here in Isaiah 40, 31 says, we will mount up with wings like eagles. One of the most significant sights of the wild is an eagle soaring in the sky. Higher and higher with seemingly little effort. So it is with a child of God who draws their strength from above and is able to go ever upward and onward, always reaching new heights of achievement in spite of the storms, in spite of the difficulties, in spite of what pushes against us. In fact, let me tell you something, my brother, my, my, my graduate, the things that push against you actually make you stronger. You see, in, in the wild, all other birds fly away from the storm. But the eagle, see, the Bible says you shall mount on wings as eagles. The eagle flies into the storm. And the reason the eagle flies into the storm is that the eagle wings are designed that the stronger resistance it gets, the higher it can fly. I wish somebody was listening to me today. Eagles are fascinating creatures. They are, have the sharp vision and, and they're designed with their wings to, to fly and to soar higher than all other birds. They first must learn to walk. They, the eagles do not fly instinctively. They must learn to fly. Are you all listening to me? Eagles do not come out of the egg flying. They have to learn to fly. They have to, they first must learn to walk. And when they are old enough to fly, they do not realize that they are even capable of flight. Oh, you all listen to me. I'm talking about designed to soar. The eagle doesn't recognize, doesn't realize when it's born that it's even capable of flight. But it's the nurturing, it is the equipping of the mother that helps the eaglet. And I wish I had time to talk about that eaglet today. And sometimes because the eagle, eaglet doesn't know that it can fly, the mother has to literally push the eagle, eaglet out of the nest. And sometimes the, the eaglet is, is falling helplessly to the ground and the mother is waiting for the eaglet to learn to flap those wings because all he has to do is flap the wings and can fly because it's designed. The eaglet is designed to soar. But the eaglet doesn't know that it, what it's designed to do until stress and pressure and difficult situation make it use the wings that it never knew it could use. And so the mother would push the eaglet down and, and in hopes that the eaglet would start flapping so that it could fly. And, and, and if the eaglet didn't, the mother would swoop down just before it hits the ground and bring the eaglet 
back to the nest and then try it all over again. Uh, I'm telling you here today, graduates, I believe that you have been nurtured in this environment that we call Oakwood. You've been nurtured by your parents. You've been nurtured by the faculty. You've been nurtured by the administration. You've been nurtured by your own friendships and relationships with your peers. But now the time has come for the eaglet to come out the nest. And, and, and it's time to learn to fly and to soar. And see, what other, uh, what they tell me, those who study birds, they said birds, most birds fly, but eagles soar. And eagles soar because they learn to ride the wind. And they learn how to take advantage of that wind that presses up against it. And instead of it knocking the eagle, eagle down, the eagle learns to soar above the stresses and challenges of life. To fly means to simply move along and going about the daily routines without any hope or joy. But to soar high means to display joy and thrill and gratitude in living. It means to rise above disappointments and to spread your beautiful God-given wings into the sun and fly. It's beautiful to watch an eagle fly. Eagles fly and eagles just soar in such a beautiful and magnificent way. And sometimes they, they said they've seen eagles soaring at 15,000 feet. And one unconfirmed report said, a jet line and he looked out his window and when he looked at his window he saw the eagles just there flying just soaring into the wind you my dear graduate you have been designed to soar because God says nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do God has put in you he has built you he has designed you to soar like an eagle to get eagles wings and soar and take your destiny for whom for where God has called you the eagle can fly because they've been created to fly they just got to figure out and connect with what God has created them to do what I'm here to tell you my brother my sister my graduate just like that eagle was designed to soar but the eagle has to learn to do what it was designed to do. You have to learn to soar in difficult and challenging moments. It reminds me, and not settle for mediocrity, not settle for less because God has designed you for so much more. When I think about settling, I think about my own experience, graduated from uh, going to school in high school and in the 12th grade, I dropped out of school. I had finished the first semester, but I was done. I was working. You see, I was working at a place called Burger Chef. And I was making a dollar and 65 cents an hour. But there was promise for me at Burger Chef because the manager had told me, he said, Alex, you are good work. And one day I think you might be able to, to, to make assistant manager. And so I set my sights low. I said, I can be an assistant manager. Never thought anything further than that. Never thought that I could go to college or university. Never thought that I could excel further than Burger Chef. But it's so for me, becoming an assistant manager became the height and the pinnacle of what I could reach because seeing an assistant manager, I, not, not, I didn't make $1.65. I could make $3 an hour. Oh, yes, $3 an hour. And so my, I set my sights on $3 an hour, but I set my sights too low. And so I dropped out of high school for three months until a, a beloved teacher came by, principal of the Adventist school. He came by and he said, listen, Alex, he said, why did you drop out of school? I was because I got my height, I got my eyes set on being an assistant manager. He said, well, how much does an assistant manager make? I said, well, I, I, I think I can make, I can get up to $3 an hour. And he said, Alex, the Lord has so much more for you. He said, the Lord has designed you. He said, for more. 
And if you can wrap your head around it, and if you can trust God enough, God has higher sights, higher places, a higher plane. God has a different level he wants to take you to. And bless your heart, I, I got myself together and I went on back to school and I went talk to my teachers and I got them to let me make up all the back work I'd done. They said, you can, you can get back in, but you got to make up all the work that you've missed and you got to keep up. And by your, by God's grace, I made up all the back work. I kept up and I graduated cum laude in my class. And then I went to Oakwood and I graduated. And then I went to Andrews and I graduated. And then I went to Fuller and I graduated. I was looking too low. God says, I have designed you to soar past what you think you're capable of. Whatever you've imagined to do, God says, will not be restrained. Nothing will be restrained from them, whatever they imagine to do. And I'm here to tell you today, graduate, God has so much in store for you. This is only the beginning. God has so much in store for you. My challenge to this class of 2021 is accept God's challenge of not just flying, but accept God's challenge, accept God's challenge of soaring. Don't settle for mediocrity. Don't settle for being like everyone else. Don't settle for being a good doctor, but soar to be a great doctor. Don't settle for being an attorney, but soar to be the nation's best attorney. Don't settle to just go into IT, but soar to create the next TikTok generation. Don't settle for just being an architect, but, set, but, but soar to be the architect that will build the next commercial skyscraper, 100% green. Don't settle for, for being a good engineer, but soar to be the engineer that will be build the fastest train in the world that exceeds 500 miles per hour with a safety record that surpasses any form of transportation that currently exists. Don't settle for just being a bioscientist, but soar to find the cause of cancer and the preventable cure. Don't settle for being a good teacher, but soar to be the teacher that discovers the methodology of getting male students to love to learn and unlock their potential. Don't settle for being a good computer technician, but soar to make Steve Job look like child's play. Don't settle for being just a good artist, but take your brush and your canvas and soar to heights that Michelangelo only dreamed about. Don't allow mediocrity to cheat you out of what God has in store for you. You were designed, graduate, to soar. Don't allow shallow and small dreams to rob you of your potential in Christ. Don't allow so low self-esteem and low self-image to short-circuit God's plans for you. He built you to soar. He designed you not just to fly, but he designed you to soar. Soar on to be the special that discovers the cure. Soar on to be the first seven Adventist Supreme Court judge. Soar on to, be, to find the cure for AIDS. Soar on and become the Adventist equivalent of Mother Teresa. Soar on that creates the perfect, pro, to, to, uh, soar on and create the perfect prosthetic replacement. Soar on and become the one that designs the automobile that runs officially off of water. Soar on and be the next generation general conference president that leads the church in the finishing of God's work. Soar on and be the next president of the United States. Soar on and be the first Seventh-day Adventist to win the Nobel Peace Prize for your outstanding work in social justice and social equity. Soar on and live your life in such a way that when he that shall come will come, say, come, ye blessed of my father. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many. Soar on and be what God wants you to be because God says nothing will be restrained from them that they have imagined to do. God has designed us to soar, to soar like eagles, 
to soar, to soar like eagles. We are designed by God that whatever your imagination has dreamed to do, God says, I've already put in you the ability to do that. Eagles are able to take the storms of life and not be put down by the storms, but but fly over in the storms. Soar on, graduates of 2021, to your destiny in God. God has a plan for you, and God has already put it in you, the ability to fulfill those plans. Let us pray. Father, we have been made and created in your image, designed with incredible potential and possibilities. And sometimes because of the enemy, he gets us to second guess ourselves, have self-doubt, have low self-esteem, and we miss out on the potential that you've placed in us. It is my prayer that the graduates of the class of 2021 of Oakwood University soar, recognize their their design to soar, even in a pandemic, past the storms of life, actually using the storms of life to fly higher and higher and yet higher to reach the destiny that you have planned for them. Bless them. Bless their parents and continue to bless this university. It's our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for the success of our graduates and for the faithfulness of their parents, teachers, and pastors who supported them on this journey. As our students leave Oakwood University, help them to live not just for time, but more importantly, for eternity. Remind them in their maturation of Solomon's wisdom. Unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. Hear our prayer merciful Father. In the name of Jesus, amen.